so we were just talking about community. I, I want to know, a, you, you do the rabbit room, and it seems like you're really plugged into a, a good group of people in, in Nashville. Um, can you talk about the, the importance of community in your life? There's a song that uh, on my new record um, that is called Shine Your Light On Me, and it's, it's, it's a song that I, I ended up uh, writing about community and the need for community. And, I guess that's what it's about, um, but it's, uh, I was thinking about my kids and one of the things that I've talked about at the dinner table with my family is trying to help them to understand how important church is. Most of us who grew up in church probably went through at least some phase where we loathed it, you know, mm -hmm. where we didn't want to go and our parents made us go and, uh, and I kind of think of it like, like brushing your teeth, like you don't have to like brushing your teeth but you still just have to do it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of reasons why that is, but but one of the things that I've noticed the older that I get is that, um, you know, I have friends who've gotten divorced and uh, situations that were heartbreaking to watch. And, you know, friends who didn't quite, but almost got divorced and went through really difficult situations. And, and there seems to be a correlation between the, the struggle that they feel and their absence from their community. Hmm. Um, I don't know w which one started first, it doesn't really matter to me, but all I know is that, that there's a tendency to, when things get really tough, to want to hide from the people who love you the most. And, uh, and I know that I have that in me, too. Um, and I don't know all the reasons for that. But, you know, God gave us the church because He knows that we need each other. And, you know, we're supposed to go every Sunday because, you know, or more than that if for some people. Um, be, because we, uh, you know, it's just like kicking an ember out of the fire. It, it's just going to cool off, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I've, the older that I've gotten, the more that I've realized that um, I need people in my life to tell me the truth and to, uh, to, to preach the gospel to me on a daily basis, you know. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I start to disappear from that stuff, then the lies um, become louder. Hmm. Most of my job, uh, is about my imagination. Um, you know, I write books and it's all about thinking stuff up in my head, thinking stories and characters and whatever up and trying to tell a story. Songwriting is about imagination too. You know, there's nothing here and now I, I want to speak a melody into being and an idea or a song and create something. And that all starts with this blank piece of paper that you, your imagination fills in the, the blank. Michael Card. Um, told me once that your your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness and I think there's a lot of truth to that I think that um, for me one of my greatest weaknesses is my imagination that that it it runs wild in the very worst ways sometimes um, you know not just lustfully but also uh, my tendency to believe the voices in my head mm -hmm. you know and so so for some people they may they may have occasional voices in their head that say you're a failure or you're a sinner or whatever and they may be this big but for somebody like me for whatever reason they're this big mm -hmm. and it got I remember that a few years ago it's, it got so bad that uh, that I remember I would dread mowing my yard um, we, we live in the country so we have a, a, a few acres and, and it takes me like three hours to mow on a riding mower and so it's three hours of me and my thoughts I had convinced myself that my best friends hated me. <laughs> I was just like, I have no friends. And they, not only do they, they not like me, they actively <laughs> dislike me, you know? And which, how stupid. Like, so I ended up mowing with tears in my eyes. Wow. I remember crying while I was mowing and, and, uh, and ended up, you know, coming inside and cleaning up and going to meet them for lunch and not wanting to because mm. I was like, these people hate me. Why would I want to go? <laughs> and as soon as I sat down at the table, I saw Ben and Eric, these you know shining lights in the darkness, and they hugged me, and they were like, "What are you going to order?" Hmm. And five minutes later, I was just like, it was like the spell was broken." And I remember I told them that day, I was just like, "Wow, it's so weird to me that the way my brain can play tricks on me and convince me of these things that just aren't true." So my point is, community uh, fights back, you know, hmm. and yeah. just their presence. Like if it's true that Eric and Ben are bearers of the Holy Spirit of the Living God, that there is this. You know, I picture them as the, these these men with this fire burning inside of them. You know, uh, it's like you put on the goggles and you know night vision, and mm -hmm. you see whoo, this this thing happening inside of these guys. And so I'm I'm stuck in the darkness, and I walk into Las Palmas Mexican restaurant, <laughs> and I see these burning fires, and I draw near to it, and and suddenly all the voices that were crowding out the 
the, the truth fall away. Wow, and so, so I've been trying to teach my kids that that's what church is for. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, at least, that church is for. It's not just a, a social time or a time for us to go and, and feel good. It's, it's like there's something very tangible, something very real is happening in the physical and spiritual realm just by drawing near to the fire, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, so I've long valued the community in my life because I, 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 I'm such a, uh, I have such a tendency to fall away that I know that I need it mm. badly. Hey, I'm Andrew Peterson and I live in Faith Village.